But you know what I'm talking about. You look at someone and you think, wow, this person left a good legacy behind, a, a good reputation behind. And, 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 and what a character. What, what a beautiful thing that is. You know the test of true character, Christians? The test of true character is how you live your Christian life in secret. How you live your Christian life when no one's looking. How you live your Christian life when your parents who taught you in the way die and now you're left alone in this wicked world to live. How would you live? How would the church live if they wouldn't have a preacher or prophet you know, preaching? Would they still maintain their integrity to love God? You know what Paul said to the church at Philippi? He says, wherefore my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but look at this, much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. The apostle Paul, they didn't go and say, okay church, let's get together and do what we're called to do because Paul's here. They did it even when Paul wasn't there. That's the test of true Christian character. That when you sing in church and when you sing at home. When you're, when you're under the word of God in church and when you're under the word of God at home. When you love your wife and children in church and when you love your wife and your children at home. When you love the brethren in church and you love them at home. You don't speak behind their backs. When you serve them in church and you serve them by praying for them. When you love people. When you love God. The house of God. That's the true test. Anyone can give you a smile in your face and say hello, praying for you, brother. You don't understand how many times I've had people say that. Praying for you. I don't want your prayers. I don't want prayers from people that are living a double life and have double tongues and dishonor the word of God. Don't want your prayers. Don't need them. Don't want people like Joash. I want people like Jehoiada that love worshiping God and sets up the right things and in, in establishing the house of God, loving God, loving the church, loving and serving good things. If you only do those things that are right because they're taught to you and you don't love God, you're not going to finish. I'm telling you now. You know, young people, I'll tell you this. If all you if all you if all you if you if you're here with an open Bible, Elisha, if you're here and looking and listening, as long as I live with an open Bible and I die and you go out in the world, see your dad's gone now. I don't have to be under the word of God. Jehoiada is dead. Finished. I can go and do what I want to do. Freedom. Then all you did, all your Christian lives are fake. You're, you know, this is what it is. You have two kinds of professing Christians. You have an apostate and you have a backslidden Christian. I don't know about Jehoi Jeho Joash whether he was apostate or not. I can't tell you right now. Uh, king Saul, well you, you go ahead and find out when you die. They, he was a righteous king in the beginning but there are people that go all the way, they don't finish, they're genuine but there are people that go all the way but they're apostates and never hit their heart. Never. The truth of God's word was only a textbook. They never loved God. They were only there under, as long as their father or their mother or whatever it is, whatever motive a person has for coming to church and being under the word of God. Would your testimony hold weight if there was People in your life that love the Lord or not. Think about that. It's so hard to live the Christian life. It, it is so difficult. But ultimately you're living the Christian life for God, to honour God, to love God. And we, when we, we, don't, we don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together is so we can be exhorted by one another to keep going and loving God and worshipping God in its proper place. But what if you lost brethren? What if you were like in the beginning of the book of Acts and it was scattered because of the persecution of Saul and you spread out? Would you be able to go and say, you know what, I'm going to find a good Bible-believing church. I'm going to find a group of people that love God and continue to serve God. Or is it an opportunity to say, oh, I'm free now. I can go and live. This is what happened during COVID. The government put these rules, people were scattered, perhaps, perhaps some of them were watching sermons in their pyjamas while eating Cocoa Pops and never returned back to church when church was open again. 
It was their time to get out of there, you know, more comfortable. I thank God that these people, that faithful people, an old lady that's still able to come, can't get out of bed, still in her place. I thank God, young children, parents die, they're still in their place. They grow up and they're still in their place. I thank God for that. What a testimony.